introduce me. I felt compelled to do so for God's purposes. Life is a struggle for each of us at times. I was telling my Sunday school class this morning that it's not so important for us to give details for where God has brought us from. We just need to know he brought us from it. He brought us out of it. It doesn't matter if you've been drinking for 25 years and God delivers you out of that. It's not where he brought you out of. It's where he's taking you. He's taking you through the land of breakthrough. He's taking you through the corridors of promise. He's taking you to the mount called Zion. I was talking to somebody just yesterday. I said when I came back to San Antonio, I came back broken, broken. Broken hearted. Spirit broken. And no, no, not very much money. But God wasn't just taking me from one place to bring me to San Antonio. He brought me to San Antonio to take me someplace. Every one of us have a story to tell. Some of us might have sold our bodies. Some of us may have danced on poles. Some of us just danced like hoes. Some of us had no standard of righteousness within our lives. Some of us attempted it. But in all that we thought that we could do in our own strength, we failed. In building relationships, sometimes it felt like we hit the right spot on the ocean and the wind was going to hit our sails and our relationship was going to carry us to that beautiful horizon of happily ever after. And then we realized that the boat was sinking. Then along comes somebody walking on water again. Uh, some of us may have run to meet him halfway just to tell him you're too late they're already dead and he reminds us that he's the resurrection we've had these moments in our lives when we've gained so much economically that we decide to build bigger barns and we realize it's a dead issue (laughs) no hope is in bigger barns There's no hope in fancy cars. There's no hope in darkened bars. There's no hope in failed relationships that keep resurfacing in our own spirits and our own minds. There's no refreshing in that. There's no refreshing in remembering when we were those that produced the downtrodden. Or when we were those that were downtrodden. There's no hope in that. But there's, there's this thing that always amazes me about our God. And that he, he's a God of I ain't going to give up on you yet. Aren't you glad God didn't give up on you when you was out there? You, aren't you glad that God made a promise that we would crush his head? That the wicked one would not win. Aren't you glad? All of us in life has these moments where we aspire to do great things and really believe that we can until we realize that there's some kink down there. Come on. Come on, preacher. And then we find that Jesus is real. He's not just somebody we heard about anymore. Jesus isn't just some long haired, blonde haired, blue eyed guy with a long white skirt on and a yellow belt. That's not Jesus. But Jesus is the word and unfettered word of truth. The word of the living God. That was sent forth for creation's sake. That he might redeem those that were lost to the father. What a plan. When we were out there and 
people were abusing us and we were being abused and we abused other people when daddy treated us wrong or uncle raped or, or mama neglected or auntie fondled or whatever that our case was, whatever our poison was, whether it was pornography whether it was, or whether it was just being selfish and mean and, and covetous and greedy, whether it was just conjuring up confusion. You know how some folks that are messy mm -hmm. always like to keep stuff going. Yep. Some of y'all was like that. But along came Jesus. He didn't come on an accident. Uh, Calvary wasn't an accident. Uh, he invited them to hit him. I'm not going to keep you too long today, but if you'll just let me, I'm going to talk to you for a minute. Because I want to talk to you about pressing through to conquer. The Bible tells us that we're more than conquerors. But in order to conquer something, you have to approach it. You have to see that that thing is there to stop you. That thing is playing full-blown prevent defense. That thing is trying to keep you from being solely and completely set free. That thing that wants you to constantly move back and forth so that it takes you 40 years to get to some place that should have took you 13 days. Yep. Yep. But, but in order for us to conquer, sometimes God allows obstacles. Sometimes God allows us to do things and to be in a place. And it doesn't seem fair, but he gives us this ability to make choices. And, and sad to say, some of our choices undo us. Some of our choices may look good for the moment and we say, well, I'm just going to do this for a little while. I'm just going to try this for a little while because if he let my daddy get away with it or if he let my mama get it, surely he'll let me do it. Yeah. Well, I don't have no other choice but to do this. I don't have no other recourse but to do this. So we make it. And that's a lot of money in that. So I think I ought to do this. But we don't measure the consequences because we're deceived into thinking that there is no consequence that you can't handle. So God allows these things to come and, and that he might be glorified so that as he begins to press upon us this knowledge of Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. As he begins to reveal him to us and begins to open our mind and our understanding to the plight that we find ourselves in, which is utter destruction, utter chaos. There's no growth in sin. There's only death and misery. And when we get a clue, oh, when we get a clue, and Jesus will come to us and say, do you know the Son of God? Uh, when we were yet in our blindness and he uncovered our eyes and he said, you don't need to live like this. You don't need to live. Your life is not hopeless. You're not useless. You're not flesh and just nothing. You're not a piece of meat. You are a human that I came down. My father and I sat there in the garden and we created you that we might love you and that you might abide with us. You are more than conquerors. But you've been pressed. You know, it's hard to, to understand the need to move forward when there's such opposition. Sometimes anybody ever feel like just saying, forget it. I just can't keep going on like this. I may as well just forget it. You ever been in that place when you were just alone and you were sick and tired of hearing your own voice? You were sick and tired of hearing yourself? And it seemed like nobody, when you tried to talk to somebody, they didn't want to hear it. They pretended with you. You ever been there? That's the moments right there where you feel like Kool-Aid won't work for you. You can look at the Jeffersons and they ain't going to make you laugh. Uh, you ever been there where you rub the dog and the dog ain't your answer? Uh, you ever been there? Paul tells us that we are to press for the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. In Christ Jesus. This is one of those things that once we attain the wisdom. Once we realize the purpose that God has purposed for us. 
and we begin to open our minds and open our hearts and allow God to manifest in us his purpose. All of that used to be me stays back there. All that what I used to do no longer matters. All of that how they treated me blows in the wind of forgetfulness. All of that anguish and those lonely hours where the only thing that you can hear that sounds different from your voice is the moaning and the crying that utters from your spirit. Ever been there? When your biggest comfort was a pillow and a sad song. But then God whispers to us. He says, what are you doing there? <laughs> Remember when the prophet went in the cave? And God asked him, what are you doing there? <laughs> you ever ask yourself, if I'm such a conqueror, why am I wallowing in defeat? Come on. Come on. Why do I like, allow Satan to deceive me? Why do I hold on to old pain, pains and anguish and bad decisions in the hopes that somehow they're going to keep me afloat? Why? I need to press against this thing. I'm trying to help somebody today. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even that only begotten our son, the word spoken, the word revealed, Father, in his name, we come before you grateful. Lord, use this vessel for thy glory. Speak unto every spirit and every soul in this place today of your glory. Of your redemption power. Father, set captives free today. Loose the bound. In the name of Jesus Christ, make it so this day. That we might press to conquer. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to be coming from Romans, the 8th chapter today. Amen. Will you stand in reverence to the word of God? When you have found it, play, say, please say amen and look with me at verse 35. Amen. Y'all using them Bibles. Y'all learning how to get there quick now, ain't you? Uh, ain't that something? Look at God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the word of God reads at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Where is that strength? In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Say it, church. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. You may be seated. We are pressed to conquer. There's one thing for you to be pressing through something. There's another thing to be pressed by something. Decisions can sometimes be daunting, overwhelming. Especially when it seems like it's the same decision I had to make three weeks ago. And the same decision I had to discuss on last night. And in a two weeks time, I'm going to have to discuss that decision and how we're going to make it in a couple of more weeks. It can press on you. Do I buy now or do I buy later? Should I buy this one or should I buy this decision that's pressing? The world is trying to press upon us. And that's okay with me. Because the more they press, the more we ooze forth the glory of God. 
See, they're going to squeeze and squeeze and try to get you to say uncle. Because we know that the God of this world is Satan, but the God of creation is our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be his name. Hallelujah. And so now we know that this world that says that, that we should give in to debauchery, we should give in to illicit acts, we should give in to girls being half naked and mothers teaching their children how to be rebellious and, and hard hearted against the word of God. We should just give it up because you can't do nothing to change them. Your prayers ain't changing nothing, which is a lie from the pits of hell. Huh? Where was Jesus when your husband walked out? Where was Jesus when your wife went out with that other man? Where was Jesus when your wife left you for that woman? Where was Jesus when your husband left you for that man? Where was Jesus when your child told you what you could do with your money, your house, and your life? Where was Jesus when she slapped you across your face? And the cop said you can't do nothing. Where was Jesus? He was at the right hand of the throne of God. Waiting for that moment of submission. Uh, he was right there waiting for you to say, I can't go on like this anymore. He was pressing and allowing you to be pressed upon because he wanted you to taste the sweet flavor and the savor of victory. See, you can't appreciate winning a football game until you endure some practices. Uh, you can't appreciate knowing what it's like to be in a relationship where God is in the middle of it and God is growing you up and God is binding it together stronger and stronger each year with each new challenge God's presence and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ just cause all of life's hardness and all the hardships to make you shine. There's something about lamps that require oil you know back in the day. And in order for us to let our light so shine, Christ knew what he was speaking of. He said, in order for you to reign, people will have to see you and see me through you. Therefore, the oil of gladness have to be poured upon you. And after that, it has to come out of you. There has to be something different about the presence of God in your life in the trying moments. In the hard times, when it feels like your very heart has been snatched out of your body, when it feels like all you hear is confusion, 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 when it says, know this, that God is not the author of confusion. God is the author of peace. The Bible says, fear had torment. Some people are afraid to let go and let God. Some people are afraid that if I try to let God rule my life, where will my strength be? Because people like me the way I am. You see, I'm good looking, so they want me to, because I'm good looking. They want me for my body. They want me because I can sing. They want me because of my money. But look, what good is all that if you don't have Christ? Christ came that you might have life and have that more abundantly. That you might stand bold in the presence of all our position and say, I will not fold. I will stand because I am a conqueror. Yea, even more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Why is that? Why is that such an important thing for you to realize today? Because we are being attacked today. Christians are the, the black sheep of the family, as it were. We, the Christians right now, we're just that, 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 that stepchild, so to speak, in society. We're the redhead stepbabies of America. Indeed, of the planet. Huh? And the devil is going to continue to try to raise his ugly head to bring fear to the hearts of God's people. There's not a sword thick enough, sharp enough to give, make me fear and turn away from my Jesus. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't been made yet. huh? But if we press and allow the pressing to occur without faltering, without giving up, and when those hard moments come and rejoice in the middle of it, not complain and murmur and bicker, I've never seen any scripture that said, well, they were victorious because they bickered. I've never seen scripture that said they were made conquerors because they complained and got on God's nerve and so he just gave in. I've never seen that scripture. Uh, I've never seen that scripture where Jesus said, well, look, if you can't handle it, run the other way. 
Huh? I've never seen that scripture that said, well, if you go up against the Ammonites and they start beating you down, blame it on somebody else. I've never seen that scripture. Even when Moses held his hands up and they began to go weary, he had somebody on his right hand and somebody on his left hand. And when they got weary, they raised his hands for him. That conquering was not going to be delayed at all. They had victory. Let me tell you why you go through things. This is what I'm talking to you about. We go through bouts of loneliness. We go through bouts of sadness. Sometimes we just miss our loved ones. Sometimes we've been injured by a loved one. Sometimes we've been so long in the dark that the enemy convinces us that there's no way out. He's a liar. We've been so long doing wrong and other people injure us and we've injured so many other people in our lives. Some of us don't even want to admit it because we can do so many things so well. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I, I'm, I was looking at something and the husband was telling his wife she was trying to compel him to go to church. And he said, but, but why? He said, I'm not really that bad. Wow. He said, I do good things. He said, don't I give to this? And he says, I'm good with the kids. Uh, I provide a good living. I'm, I'm, I make people laugh. You know, I, I, I pay my bills. I, 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 I'm on time. I, I, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm good enough. And she said, oh, okay, I see my bad. She said, so what you're saying is instead of going to church, we ought to just have everybody come over here and circle around you. Mm -hmm. See, some of y'all think you're so good that God ought to let nothing come upon your life because you're just nice. You're sweet. Uh, you, you really haven't done nothing since 1979. And by 84, you was really getting a clue. So why would God let this happen to you? Because God wants you to shine. He wants you to shine. He wants to be glorified in you. He will be honored by your life if you let him. I cannot imagine two married people consistently living together with the idea of hurting each other. To me, that is the stupidest thing since putting black shoe polish on bread, calling it a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Why would you purposely, and say you know God. Say you love Jesus. Say you, but you act like three-year-olds. Act, no, I'm sorry, eight-year-olds. I'm sorry, I don't mean to insult no eight-year-olds. Because you refuse to humble yourself because you're afraid that if I humble myself, then he's going to win. Well, if I humble myself, she's going to win. Y'all both lost and losing. But you think you got it right. They got a word for that. Stupid. I think that's the word. Yeah. See, because stupid is as stupid does. Because when you know to do right and you don't, you're a fool. You're a fool. And it's so sickening. Uh, she this, uh, but you don't know he this, she this, he this, she this, he this, but he, but she, but he, but she, but he, but she, me. Oh, press the Lord, oh my soul. You ain't, you haven't been, you're not conquering anything. You ain't conquering nothing. And then you wonder why you're going you're gonna to be spent. You're going to be pushing that car. Y'all going to take turns pushing that car that's stuck in the mud and wonder why y'all ain't going nowhere. Your turn. Your turn. Now let's blame other folks. Let's blame Bishop. Never saw that making you a conqueror. But when Jesus came, he didn't come to form an elite band of losers. Jesus didn't come to establish a brigade of no, do-nothings. He didn't come to establish a kingdom of want to run away from everything. He didn't come to build you up so you could be the chief of murmurers. He didn't come to be, save you and deliver your soul so you could just buck against him because you don't think you ought to. Well, why should I have to? How come they get to and I don't? Why don't you grow up? Humble yourself. So, and why, why don't you just challenge God? Just challenge them. Just, just for once in your life say, okay, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm going to challenge God. I'm going to take God at his word. 
And I'm going to say, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I surrender all, everything. I don't care what that person does. If they want to go to hell in a handbasket, I'm not joining them. Hello? But no, that's too much like uh, serving God. That's too much like being right. That's too much like having somebody really respect you for real because you're really walking according to the precepts of God. That's, that's really accepting that God is pressing you and that you have a right to the tree of life and that you've determined that you are one of the sons of God and that God is real and that God's word is true and every man a liar and that the powers that be, they are ordained of God and if I'm to serve the living God, I must press so that I might conquer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I must, and, and, and if I don't endure the pressing, how should I accept the reward? Yeah. Uh, you want God to give you everything while you do nothing. Uh, well, I just can't, but you see, you don't know her. Oh. Yeah, I do. I know her. She arrogant, pompous, prideful, and deceitful. But you don't know him. Yeah, I do. He's a whiner. He, he has effeminate ways. He's stubborn and rebellious. I know you both. And you both need to get saved. On, Hello? On, you fool some of the people. You can't fool the Holy Ghost. You need to get saved. Yeah. Be grown ups. Hello? Be gro grown people. Yeah. Huh? There's a sorry man that, that, that I just can't stand sorry men. But, but you don't know. I've been through. You ain't been through nothing. Well, so yeah. what is it new? You right now, God is using you to make up a whole new issue of life. It's never happened to anybody but you before. Oh my. Oh me. Quit crying and grow up. Receive what Jesus has for you. Quit looking behind you. Quit going. You can't, you're not in a race wrapping up a ton. How are you supposed to be reaching for the for the prize? Am I right? You ain't you're up here talking about hand. 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 Well, you're supposed to be doing your breakthrough. You're more than a conqueror stance. Huh? But Jesus is waiting for us to get a clue. Jesus is waiting for us to acknowledge that there's just things that we have to let go of. We can't keep harping on the fact that I was abused 15 years ago. We can't keep harping on the fact that I did heroin. So what? The devil's still a liar. Jesus is one that delivers. Jesus is one that said he came to set the captive free. Once you receive that, once you hold on to that thing and say, Lord Jesus, this is real. I need to be free. I don't want this anymore. I want you, Lord Jesus. And when you remember, and look, let me tell you something. When people are so comfortable in serving their flesh that they think Jesus has to vote on whether or not Wow. It's a good idea. Wow. You know, I'm going to do this, Jesus, but I hope you think, I hope you get, catch on because I'm going to do this. Wow. You know, I'm going to diss my so-and-so so I could go swimming. Wow. I, I don't care if my word ain't worth nothing. On, I don't care if I look like I have no character at all because, you know, I'm cute. You know, and I can make good excuses. And, 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 and if anybody here thinks Jesus is ready to buy your excuses, show me what you're going to pay him with. So, I, I don't get it. The word of God has come forth and he shows you his hand time and time again. And we act like this. I, I, I don't get it. I can see a child saying I'd rather have fun than to read. But grown people. Come on, I mean, really, God tells you you're not married, separate. That sounds like you're not married, forget everything else after that. We can do what we want to. You're not married, separate yourselves. God will bless you. Separate yourselves. God will bless you. You're not married. Separate yourselves, God. I bless you. I'm trying to help you get to conquer and heal. Yeah, you know, because he, he's got you in a position. He's just trying to press you beyond your, your place. So once you realize it's not about how you feel about it, think about it. If you just obey, just obey him. Just do it. Just pack a bag, put it on the end of a stick. Carry it. Say, still love you. I'm around the corner, down the street. You know, no problem. But we're going to do this because once we separate, we can walk across the waters. Yeah. See, and then, see, because he'll, he'll make the aisle happen. It's not complicated. Huh? Jesus says, I put a pastor over you. You agree to be the pastor. He tells you, men, take earrings out your ear. I'm trying to get you to conquer and heal. The men that go to conquer and heal don't have earrings in their head. 
There's no men with skirts on on Conquering Hill. There are no women with britches on Conquering Hill. There ain't no uh, wives being the man of the household over their husband on Conquering Hill. How you going to just look down at your man and, 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 and look, your mother don't have no authority over your husband. I don't care if she did give birth to him. Hello? Amen. Amen. They just don't have. He can, no. Uh-uh. And, and if your children still living at home, you they boss. They ought to call you Masa or Lord. <laughs> hey, if they grown and could be gone and they still live there, make, I tell you what, they'll only tolerate it so long. They'll be getting tired of calling you Lord. This is my Lord Father. Come on in. This is my Lord Father. This is master. I thought that was your daddy. No, don't call him that. <laughs> no, this is master, my Lord. <laughs> See, put something on them. Make them get up every morning after they do their 25 push-ups and sweep them out the kitchen. And See, that, that'll help them make their way to conquer and heal when you press them. Hello? Huh? You know, some, the hardest thing for some people to do is admit that they are wrong and humble themselves before God and say, Father, I have been wrong all this time. I have got to get rid of me so I can have all of thee. But it's just hard because we get stuck and forget, man, mm, I know you're talking about me. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Yeah, uh-huh, right. So if you know that, then change that. If you know that, let it go. And let God. So God can grow you up. Men, quit being sissies and crybabies and whiners with your wife. Be men. I can't believe she did that. Why not? You like her girlfriend's roommate. Quit being girlfriend roommate and be her husband. Quit being girlfriend roommate and be a man. Hello, it's time to grow up. Stop this foolishness and quit pretending it ain't you. And watch what God will do. God will bless you. I'm telling you, God, won't he bless you? Uh -huh. Won't he bless you? Will he bless you? Yes, he will. He'll grow you up. Uh huh. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you something. You, you know, this man that, that, that was talking to his wife, the one that was so good, he said, but if I go to church, I'm just going to go to sleep after a while. Because, you know, that's not important or you're just really tired. Some people work all night and they get really tired. My son used to do that. Amen. Or some people just stay up on Facebook being correspondents. <laughs> dear Abby, dear Gabby, dear Labby, dear all that other stuff. Amen. Some of y'all need to take your Facebook account and throw it in the deepest part of the sea. So you can go to Conquering Hill. Huh? You know, Jesus came so that we can have this peace. So that he can help us realize that he can provide all that we have need of. So that we might in that last hour of our life, in that last day, be able to go with him and be with him eternally. That's why Jesus came to reconcile us unto God. Not so that the enemy can just run roughshod. Some of y'all just open the door for him. Oh, excuse me, Satan, let you come on in. Huh? But if you just go ahead and trust Jesus, the Bible says if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Huh? If you resist him, he'll flee. Qu quit coming to church air nine then, and then coming expecting to see what everybody else is going to get. Why don't you come getting something? Huh? Wonder what Bishop going to do. If Bishop don't do much, I just give it back to God and let God use Bishop. Amen. Amen. I don't have no Holy Ghost to give you. Uh, Jesus said he will send another comforter. And that's been done. When we press in this dark day, and it's a dark day. You know, I was listening to people talk about like America, like America is a shiny city on a hill. When you got women teaching their daughters how to be disobedient to their husbands, you know something's wrong. And go to church. Yes, sir. And the daughters love it. Because children are supposed to be like that. Ooh, if mama say so. Uh, and they'll, de they'll deploy any kind of uh, deception. And I don't understand men. Why, why are you scared of your wife? I was talking to my wife, I think. I said, what's wrong with getting a hefty trash bag? Your wife can't whoop you unless you sort of, and your, and your backbone make you walk like this. 
get a hefty check. I love Maryland. Maryland ain't no little shrimp. Maryland six, I mean five foot seven. Shit, when I met her, she wasn't no little bitty woman. Hey Amen. She can hit too. But it, I tell you, I know how to get a hefty trash bag and go in her room, go through my house, every drawer if I have to, with a flashlight, look under the house if I have to. And, and Tony will tell you, I ain't rock getting up under that house and grab everything that looked like britches. Look, everything, put it in a hefty trash bag and that how to do something about it. Woman, well, you need to back up in the name of Jesus while I'm zip locking your, your, what used to be yours. I'm getting rid of this abomination. Uh, what's, what's she going to do? Get mad and leave? So what? She'll come back. She'll get hungry. <laughs> or wherever she go, they're going to get tired of her. Amen. They gonna get, they, she going to get hungry or they're going to get tired of her. Girl, you just laying around all day. <laughs> you need to go back home to your husband. But he threw away my $35 Levi's. He's trying to save your $2 soul. Huh? See, because we, we think it, it's mean to make. Why would God just make women dress like women? I don't think it's fair. I just don't think God should do that. It's something wrong with God making it. I just don't believe it. I know I read it. I read it. I see it. I understand it. But I just don't believe God mean for me to do that. I just don't believe. No, because you're not a conqueror. See, you, you, you want a fake conquering. You want a fake fight. You know what I'm talking about? You want a shadow box. You don't want to risk getting hit. So you just stand up there and put a light on and you want a shadow box and think you winning something. Yeah, but let, let something come up against you and you just all like this. Don't you know they're killing Christians? And this ain't going to save you. Because they can catch you coming out of a church and ascertain that you're Christian. Whether you say, no, you be talking about Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, you need to get a hold of this Christ. This is real. This is real. The devil is not playing with anybody in this room. But Jesus Christ has given us the victory. We have received the victory through Christ Jesus. And when he press upon us life's things, these things that come up in life, it's not for you to throw in the towel. It's not for you to say, well, I'd just rather not do it. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You you witness that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead by the things that he has done in your life and in the lives of people around you. And when God tell you, I'm going to tell you, God will give you some challenges, won't he? You'll be wanting to hold on to something or someone and God will say, let it go. And your heart will say, squeeze tighter. And Jesus say, just let it go. And your heart will say, no, I'm going to hold on to him like Gorilla Glue on plastic. I'm going to hold on. You know, and, and, G, and God say, you know, he'll touch you and he'll say, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Will you trust me? See, and you know how he knows when you trust him? You obey him. You obey him explicitly. All bets are off. Your friends' opinions. People that don't know Jesus. Why do people that are saved listen to people's opinions that don't know Jesus? I can see a kid doing it in school. I can't see mature adults doing that and claim Christ Jesus. It just doesn't make sense. Does that make sense to you, Brother Chuck? The writer tells us, he says, these things aren't going to separate us from the love of God. And he said that he's persuaded that they won't. He said, I am persuaded Something went off in his spirit that says it swayed me to the positive. It's an affirmative statement to be persuaded. I am affirmed by the testimony of Jesus Christ that I am more than a conqueror. Because Christ by the Holy Ghost affirms it in me. Now, being armed with this knowledge, then we go and the same writer tells us that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. 
So when we are pressed and killed on every side, when it seems like it's the hardest, I just don't want to do it. But you don't know. You don't know. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. The two men on the road to Emmaus, they were all upset because he was crucified. And, they, and he joined himself and he said, what's wrong? And they said, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard? They crucified him. Jesus Christ, he's a good man. Haven't you heard? And he said, don't you know that don't the, the, the prophet say this thing had to be done? Huh? It had to be done. Why? So that he might be revealed. I'm trying to help you. Huh? So, so, so he goes and they say, he's talking to him. He's telling them about what just happened. And they don't know it's Jesus. And then they invite him in. See, some of y'all to invite him in. See, you don't really know him until you invite him in. He stands at the door and knock. If any man here, let him open. Why don't you open and he'll come in and sup with you. And just like he did with the two men on the road to Emmaus. And you know what they were when he left? They were persuaded. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he, he ate with them and he, he blessed the bread in their house. He broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open. And they said, our hearts did burn within us. Some of our hearts, if you keep on pressing against what God has, your heart will grow cold. And nothing will move you. Nothing will move you but your own ideas. I'm trying to help you today. Huh? This Jesus, this Jesus that broke this bread and opened the eyes of a blind man. He said, do you believe on the son of God? And he said, show him to me and I'll worship him. He said, I am both he that has both spoken to you and you see and hear me now. And the man worshiped him. Huh? Huh? Jesus has been coming to you and coming to you and you hold on to your old injuries and you let the devil convince you that you can't do it without him. If you let me go, you'll be lost. You'll get no attention if you let me go. They won't think you're beautiful if you let me go. Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar and there's no truth in him. When Jesus Christ came, he came to set captives free. Your life and your past is not your future. Your past is not your future. Your past is not your future. What you're oppressed with will give you that momentum that you might go up Mount Zion and reign with Jesus Christ, that you might realize that you've conquered and that you will conquer and that you will subdue. Why? Because God commanded it in the beginning. He said that he created us and he said subdue the world. And that still stands. When he says subdue it, any issue come your way, it seems challenging, subdue it in the name of Jesus. Somebody want to get all up in your face and do you wrong? If you've been abused, you know how you subdue them? You forgive them. You say, I'm, I don't care what you've done. If you are holding unforgiveness in your heart from 14 years ago, 20 years, forgive every dope dealer that sold you drugs. Forgive every pimp that slapped you around. Forgive every man that's put a dollar in your panties. Forgive every man, every woman that ever ever lied on you, lied to you, cheated you, robbed you, stole from you, called you a name, forgive them this day. And there you go. You're going to get some go through in a minute. If you hear me right now, if you just loose this thing and say, I forgive in the name of Jesus. I will not let this thing hold me back. I'm not anchored in my past. I'm anchored in the Lord. I'm not anchored in what people think about me. I'm anchored in what God tell me I am. And he says, behold, what man of love the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. I'm one of the sons of the living God and nothing can keep me from conquering. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. If you make up your mind Hallelujah, that, 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 that Jesus is my Lord. If you make up your mind that I will humble myself, that I will walk according to his precepts, that I will trust him and not what I see, not what I feel, or not what I think, but what I know. And this I know, that Jesus is real. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and I'm telling you, crying ain't a sin. Pain ain't a sin. Huh? Being hungry ain't a sin. Um, laying with your husband even though you don't like him ain't a sin. Amen. Laying with your wife even though you don't like her ain't a sin. 
uh, uh, defrauding one another is a sin. I don't care what you want to call it, why you want to call it what you want to call it. It's an abominable thing for anyone pretending to belong to Christ that refuse to humble themselves and obey him under any circumstances. Amen, Bishop. Want to be healed and can't get healed because you're too rebellious. I know a God that can straighten a, a, a wizard hand and I know he can straighten a crooked spine. But he won't because you keep weighing the issue down with britches. Hello? Huh? Yeah, keep your mind is all wrapped up and wanting to be like the world. Uh, I'm trying to help you be a conqueror. You can't conquer while disobeying God. God tell you to go this way. You're like, no, I don't think so. Because he backed in. That's why some of y'all can't keep a job longer than you can spit. You know, you can spit that long. That's how far you keep your job. And other people cash your checks. That should have been your paycheck. You know what I'm talking about? You get a job, you quit your job, get fired or whatever. And now you don't have that paycheck. Because you want to do it your way. Because you can, you know how to use verbs and adjectives, and you were well respected in school, and your mom and daddy let you talk to them in any kind of way. So you feel like everybody ought to let you do that, right? Even on your job. And then when you lose a job, you lose your money. And then you want to blame everybody else but you. Because you didn't deal with the pressing moment right. See, those pressing moments make you shine. Those pressing moments make Jesus glow, grow you up and glow in you. It's the hard. Why should it be easy? Well, how many of y'all thought Christianity was going to be so easy, like roller skating with an ice cream? You know? You want, you want God to use you mightily, but you don't want to go through no mighty challenges. Yeah, isn't that right? Oh, Lord, use me. Let me lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. Let me, Lord, use me. I'll walk on water for you. Lord, use me. You, and, okay, Lord said, okay, walk to H-E-B. And, and uh, get you three packs of uh, Listerine strips and take them off. It's hot outside, Lord. Can I do it later? <laughs> but I don't feel like doing it, Lord. But why I got to do it? Who are you? I'm trying. God trying to give you a crown of glory. God trying to build you up in your most holy faith. He's trying to set you up. He's trying to exalt you in your season, but you keep kicking against the pricks. You don't want him to press you. You don't want to go through nothing. I've never seen a champion do nothing to achieve glory. I've never seen. I've never known of a champion. We had a coach named Hornbeek. Coach Hornbeek was a track coach. He was in the Army Reserve. He was a major. And Coach Hornbeek, one of the kindest men you ever want to meet. But Coach Hornbeek had a standard of excellence in training. Coach Hornbeek would run us, but he cared about us. He made sure we were hydrated. And one thing we liked about Coach Hornbeek was Coach Hornbeek could outrun everybody on the track team. And at that time, we thought he was old. Now I know he really wasn't old. So <laughs> that was our own mind. Because back then, you know, when you're young, people my age is old. But Coach Hornbeek wasn't old. That man had legs that were hard as rocks. And he could run like a gazelle. God designed him that way. But it didn't just happen because God designed him that way. He had a mind to achieve. He had a heart that would not allow him to stop pressing forward in achieving what he felt he could achieve and what he could impart upon us to achieve. I remember when he came to me, he said, I want you to run with Michael and Marcel Vargas. I said, sir, they run cross country. He said, I know. I said, you want me to run? These are state champions. My, they're twins. They run like we, we eat soup. I mean, there's nothing to them. And he said, I want you. I said, they're running two miles, coach. He said, that's okay, White. You can do this. Go ahead. So I believed him. I said, all right. Yeah, Coach Harvey said, I can do this. So I go and we, we head out, man. I'm, whoo, yeah, this is cool. We're pacing. I'm right there with them. They about right here in front of me. I'm right there with them. Whole mile. I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling good. And I noticed they got a little bit further in front of me, but I wasn't worried, you know, because I was just chilling. I'm, they pacing me. I'm just going, hey, I'm going to kick it in in a minute. <laughs> we hit that one mile mark and we turned. And when, by the time I hit it and turned around, they were up there. 
And at first they were right there. They hit it and they turned. I hit it and I turned and I'm like, wait a minute. So I picked up the pace. <laughs> and they, 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 they running like they, like, like, what is this? So I'm watching and they were already short. And they got shorter quicker. And I, I tried to kick it in. <laughs> <laughs> Try, and I, I tried to run it on out and I was thinking the whole Charlie didn't know what he was talking about <laughs> what made you, uh, why would he have me doing that so I got up there and they were cool they weren't, I don't even think I saw sweat on them they were just like running in place waiting for me and I'm like what's, what's, what's wrong what's, what's wrong with them but after a while Coach, he said, I want you to go run with him again. Go run with him again. And I go out there, and, and I didn't know how they do it, but it got to the point where when they hit the wall and I'd hit the wall, I turned, they wouldn't be so far in front of me. And I found that when I got there, they didn't have to wait so long, and I wasn't breathing so hard. Because he saw something in me that I didn't know was in me. That's the way Jesus looks at each one of us. He'll press you and press you to bring out the best in you. I never could outrun those guys. Not very many could in a two-mile run. Now, I can out-sprint them, <laughs> but I couldn't outrun them because they were designed that way. God has given us an intricate design, and he's included the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if we trust in the word of God, and if we trust in the work that was done on Calvary's hill, and if we trust that Jesus did raise from the dead and he did raise up from the dead and he is yet at the right hand of the Father, if we trust that he knows what's best for us, then in those hard moments when we hit the wall, we don't stop and fall. We hit the wall and we keep running and we keep moving for that mark. We keep pressing for that thing because we're more than conquerors. It wasn't that Coach Hornbeek thought I could beat them, but Coach Hornbeek wanted me to beat the little me that was inside of me so that I could be a better me that he could see and that's what God does in us so if you just quit being so hard every time something happened quit being so vulnerable quit being such a victim and be a conqueror say this thing I'm going to shut this thing off. I don't care what I was back then. I'm looking at what God has taken me and what I'm going to be. I will stand. I will stand on the word of God. I will trust in Christ Jesus. I am more than a. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody thank you. Hallelujah. It is an easy thing to fall back on our laurels and to sit back and lick our wounds and say what I could have been, what I should have been, and what I did to do, and what I should have done, and how they done done me, and when they did this, and all that is nothing. That was a song, is dust in the wind. All it is, is dust in the wind. There's time to move forward. Even after you, even if you have to ride through the desert on a horse with no name. Even if you, hey man, if you have to, if you have to climb the highest mountain and cross every sea, as long as you take Jesus with you, as long as you trust Jesus the Christ, as long as you take him at his word and have faith in him and move forward while he's pressing you to be more than a conqueror. God bless you. God keep you. Here's my prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy will try to tell you there's no hope. The enemy will lie to you and all you have to do is tell him no. My hope is in Jesus Christ and nothing else. Nothing less because Jesus Christ came back for me. He's coming back for me and he is yet with me. So no matter what he tells me to do, I will trust in the I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, uh, I 
will trust in the Lord until I die. I will stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I will stay on the battlefield until I die. Hallelujah. I die. I will stay on the battlefield. I will stay on the battlefield. I am going to stay on the battlefield until I die. Hallelujah. Almighty Lamb of God, we thank you for the visitation of thy spirit, even your healing and delivering power. Father, we thank you for your Holy Ghost and that anointing that destroys the yoke. Father, I thank you that you have established your kingdom on earth, even as it is in heaven, in us. Lord, that you might have preeminence over our lives and all that is. Father, that you will continue to press us, that we might realize and affirm that we are more than conquerors. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord, we thank you in your holy and blessed name. Amen. If you know that you're not living according to the will of God and you've been holding on to unforgiveness, and bitterness of heart. Why don't you come up today and, and get rid of that mess. Just come on up and say I want to be forgiven. And I want to forgive people that have injured me. Ministers come forward. 